called Churchill Shadow. This is chapter four um, and we're in 1940 now and it's called Fleeing Frenchmen, Rescuing Refugees and Hitler's Metal Rainstorm. Walter, Irritations. 2nd of February, the Rosen Crown Public House, London SW1. Anthony Downward settled at a small round table in the corner of the Rose and Crown to read the latest edition of the Daily Express. He slammed the paper down and stared at the printed silhouette of Walter Thompson accompanying the lead article. Winston finds his shadow again. Inspector WH Thompson of the Special Branch of Scotland Yard. In future, wherever Mr Churchill goes, by airship or car, he will be accompanied by this clean-shaven tower of a man. A handsome young man joined him at his table. Good morning, sir. Bad morning, Bullock. It simply won't do. The unfairness of it all. See this? He waved the paper at Bullock, who strained to see anything at all. Thompson, a low-class oik, is preferred over me an educated man from the right class. Don't sit down, go away and find something on Thompson, something to force him from Churchill's good graces. Thompson, sir? Churchill's blasted bodyguard! Yes, sir, I'll do what I can, sir. Bullock marched out of the pub. Damn him! Downward gathered up his paper and knocked over his sherry. The barmaid mopped up the mess and gave Downward a hard look as he scuttled away. 2nd of February, Thompson's Grocer's Norwood. Kate was in the garden, busy removing the stiff frozen clothes from the washing line. Bernie wore his uncle's long white apron and handed a customer her ration book. I'm really sorry, Mrs Spencer, but you've used all your butter allowance. I can let you have some margarine. Oh, I can't get used to these ration book coupons. And if my elf spreads it so thick on his toast, well, he'll have, he'll have to have Marge, won't he, tomorrow and serve him right. Bernie handed the woman her change. Thank you. See you tomorrow. The, sh the shop was empty, so Bernie wandered into the parlour. He picked up a tea towel and began to dry cups and saucers left on the draining board. He looked through the door into the shop and surveyed the counter display and all the shelves he had stocked this morning. He was approaching 17 and his boyish features were beginning to sharpen. He was the man around Thompson's grocers, no longer just the delivery boy, and he was determined to make a good job of it. The phone began to ring. Hello, Thompson's grocers, may I help you? He listened to the voice at the other end. Cripes, hang on please, hang on. He opened the back door and called to Kate. Quick, quick auntie, it's the operator for you. Long distance, France. Kate dropped the basket of washing and ran inside to pick up the receiver. Hello, hello. Hello Kate, it's Stella. Oh my love, how are you? Kate cupped the hand over the receiver and whispered to Bernie who was jumping up and down in front of her. It's Stella. Stella's voice was tinny over the poor line. We're both fine, thanks, Kate. Is Walter at home? No, I'm afraid not. He's taken up his old job again with you-know-who. I'm not supposed to talk about it. Kate tucked her left hand under her right arm to warm her fingers. Well, I guessed that might have happened and I'll have to be quick. But first I need to know something. Do you think anyone listens on this line? Kate swallowed. I think Walter would have mentioned it if the Germans had got round to that already. I can't call him on the telephone, but I believe there are plans to go into the country you're in on Wednesday. Oh, that's just super. Listen, Kate, can you ask Walter if he could meet me? Do you know where he'll be? Uh, maybe. I shouldn't say this on the telephone, but do you remember the first hotel we stopped at on the way to Switzerland? Would that be the hotel we visited on a family holiday when I was about 16? You know your brother, he likes it to have advanced knowledge of the lay of the land. But Stella, Walter wants you to come home now. He thinks things will get worse for Jews in France and you could both be in danger soon. Besides, we miss you. Please come back. I will, I will. But first I have something important to do. 
Can you ask Walter to meet me at the hotel at midday? There are people relying on me and I can't let them down. Dear Kate, please kiss Bernie and Emily for me. I love you all. Take care. Yes, we love you too. I'll tell Walter, but come home, Stella. Come home. Stella? Stella? The connection was lost and Kate replaced the receiver and returned to her nephew. If you overheard anything, young Bernie, then just forget it. Zip, said Jerk Bernie, pretending to fasten his lips. You're a good lad. And don't worry, she'll be home soon. You'll see. Kate reached up and ruffled his hair. Be an angel and take a note to your uncle. I'm pretty sure he won't be able to get home tonight, even if he has got any petrol left from his ration in that old bike of his. If you hand the envelope in at the Admiralty and tell them it's for Inspector Thompson, the policeman at the gate will make sure he gets it. Would it be all right if I took the train? Bernie was already taking off his uncle's apron. Yes, of course, here's your fare, but you don't need to go right now. Stella didn't say it was urgent. You can take tomorrow off. Don't worry about getting back to work in the shop. Drop a note off for your uncle up there and enjoy yourself a bit. Maybe stop at a fancy cake shop and have a bun with your tea. It's not on rationing cafes. Thanks, Aunt Kate. Bernie stared at the money she had thrust into his hand. But Aunt Kate, that's a pound note. You're a very hard-working young man, Bernie, and you deserve it. I don't know what I would do without you. Now you go home and have a nice time tomorrow. Bernie was already thinking about getting some iced French fancies. He knew to buy chocolate for his mum, lemon for Auntie Kate, and pink ones for Stella, their favourites. He looked at the one pound note in his hand. Auntie, you're too kind. I love working with you in the shop and you don't need to pay me but can you at least tell me something about what's going on? Well, I can't telephone your uncle anymore, so I've written him this note to ask if he can meet Miss Stella in France. She wants to ask him something, and I pretty, I'm pretty sure he's going to have something to say to her, like get on the next boat back here. That's the end of chapter four.